Hey everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It. I won't be showing my face in this video because I'm sick and I look and feel like a dumpster fire. In this video, I'm going to be painting a non-metal metallic effect on the Sword of Belial, the Grand Master of the Deathwing. The new Deathwing Assault box set was graciously sent to the channel from Games Workshop. I'm also going to take this opportunity to play around with some of the new Fanatic paints from Army Painter. I've tested a big chunk of their new range and so far I am very impressed. And for this paint job, I don't want to just use black, gray, and white. I like to have a deep blue or a gray blue as my mid-tone. I'll be using four different colors, but I'm going to be mixing a mid-tone in between each successive color. And I apologize for the camera autofocus at this stage of the video. After 10 years, I finally got a new camera, but it took me a while to figure out how to lock the focal point. So as you can see here, I'm laying down the four main colors along the bottom, and in between each color, I am creating a 50-50 mix. To thin the paints down and mix them, I dip the end of my paintbrush into water, and then I stir a big water drop into each color. These paints are quite pigment heavy, so I did need to add a tiny bit more water after they were mixed, just to get a glaze consistency, which is just a fancy way of saying, make it roughly the consistency of milk. The first step I like to do is base coat the entire blade with the second darkest color. I've also seen people do this by base coating with the middle color, which honestly probably makes more sense, but this is the way that's always worked for me. Next I'm taking the second lightest color and I'm marking out the brightest areas on the sword. Now if you've never done a non-metal metallic or true metal metallic effect, one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to have the brightest areas on one side of a double-edged sword line up with the darkest areas on the opposite side. I should mention, now that you're halfway through this video, that I am not an expert on painting this effect. In fact, a commenter on YouTube once told me that I should quit painting entirely and just stick to reading books about painting after seeing one of my TMM paint jobs, a comment that my YouTube partner Ben loves to bring up, over and over. I do like to think though that I'm pretty good at blending and that's what I'll focus my energy on in this video. Now as you can see, my areas of reflection and shadow are pretty symmetrical, which is actually something you don't want. It doesn't really look natural this way, but I'll fix that as we go along with the blending. I wish I could say there is a very simple way to paint this effect, but really there isn't. Not that the techniques I'm using are difficult, but they are time consuming. I'm starting by taking a middle color and painting that in between the bright and the dark. Then I'm going to expand outward from the middle, taking brighter and brighter colors and moving towards the light areas, and vice versa for the dark areas. Brush stroke direction is important here. As a general rule of thumb, if I have a light color on my brush, I'll paint from a dark area into the light area. This is because when you lift your brush, you leave behind a tiny pool of paint. You don't want to leave a pool of light paint in a darker area. Likewise with the dark colors, if I have a dark color on my brush, my brush stroke will start in the light area and move towards the dark area. Now it's just a matter of patience. I'm using the middle colors to slowly make it look like the bright color is transitioning to the dark color, and then back again. You'll also see me periodically wiping paint onto my thumb. That's because you only want to use a little bit of paint on your brush at a time. The last colors I'm using are pure black and pure white. I'm using these sparingly. Most of the sword should be some shade of blue with just tiny accent points of black and white. So as you can see, the blends still aren't super smooth and this is the part that takes the longest, but personally, I find it very fun. I'm just taking small amounts of paint and slowly smoothing out the transitions from one color to the next. And you can stop at any point along the way. It all depends on whether you're painting it for tabletop or you're trying to replicate the box art, in which case it will take a little bit longer. Okay, so I've taken these color transitions as far as I want to take them. So now it's time for the edge highlight. This is the part that really makes the sword pop. I'm using the two brightest colors that I've been using to paint the blade. I'm putting some pure white onto my palette, and then this part is very important. Make sure to wipe off nearly all of the white paint, and then do a quick test on your hand to see if any paint comes off. If you see even the smallest smudge, then keep wiping, otherwise you're going to streak your blade. This method will require two to three layers of dry brushing, but it will also ensure that you get perfectly straight, neat edges. 
For the parts of the sword that are really dark, I'm switching to the light blue, just so there isn't a harsh contrast between the white and black parts on the sword. This is a subtle thing that almost nobody is going to notice, so you can probably skip this step. For the middle ridge running down the center of the sword, you can use the same method, but you want to be very careful. Keep your brush perfectly perpendicular to that edge and lightly drag it across. Take your time and use multiple layers if you need to, but you definitely don't want to rush this part. And there we have it, not perfect, but far more interesting to look at than just a single color blade. This is Mike from Watch It Paint It, and thanks for watching.